Hello, welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. Today we are talking about plumbing and tankless hot water heaters. So the intent of today's show is, as usual, is kind of educational. We're going to try and help steer you clear of some of those landmines you might run into on your project, especially if you're planning your own uh, kitchen or bathroom reno. Maybe you're doing a basement development yourself and you're going to reconfigure some of the, the layout downstairs. And just in general to have you kind of clued in as to those things you need to be con considering before you do the work. Or also how to troubleshoot things that are maybe existing in your home now. Um, there's some things you can certainly do yourself and that's worth giving a shot. And other things you should probably just call a plumber. So um, my guest today is Kevin Cordy. He's the owner of Butler Plumbing. Butler Plumbing is plumbing has been around for quite a while. It's a great company. They do a lot of work for us. Um, I actually heard about Butler Plumbing on the Sonic on Sonic 1029. They sponsor the Modern Rock Door, so I got a kick out of it when I met met Kevin and all this stuff because I am a fan of of that Modern Rock Door. So, anyways, enough about that. So Kevin is the original uh, co-founder and sole owner of Butler Plumbing. He likes to be out showing his plumbers new ways of doing things um, and always is there to lend a hand whenever it's needed. Uh, when he's not hard at work, he loves spending time with his wife and his two kids. Um, I know Kevin well, he's a great guy, really down to earth and really does want to help um, and that's great. So like I said, they do lots of work for us on our projects and uh, you know, I'm a supporter of theirs and vice versa, they support me. So. Uh, by the end of the show, you get a chance to get to know Kevin a lot better, his company, and then also we'll give you details to reach out to him if you ever do need a hand in, in the plumbing world. Uh, before I introduce Kevin, I'm going to show you our giveaway item today. Um, he's uh, graciously donated this uh, taco leak breaker. And you go, what's a taco leak breaker? Well, it's something that's designed to, to prevent a flood in your home. Uh, it's worth about 550 bucks. Kevin's going to supply it and install it maybe not personally. Um, and our skill testing question will be, you need to guess how many old cartridges are in this bowl. Closest person to the right number is the winner of today's giveaway item. So uh, without further, further ado, I will pull Kevin in here. Just give me one second. Mm -mm -mm. I've gone too far, bear with me. Okay. Kevin. Oh, Kevin Cordy says, unable to join. You need to be on your phone on Wi-Fi. It won't join through a computer. So um, make sure you're on your phone on a Wi-Fi connection and uh, you'll be good to go then. Until then, I'll just go through and kind of um, show some images and give an idea of what we're going to talk through um, on the in the show today. Hmm. Some of the images I was planning to show here are not showing up in my feed for some reason, so this is going to be interesting. Anyhow, the joy of the live show, you just never know what you're going to get. Let's see if I can get Kevin in here again real fast. Nope. So, Kevin, if you can hear it, uh, you need to jump on your phone for the call. Um, if somebody knows Kevin, maybe you can give him a shout, let him know. Otherwise, I'll do my best just to steer us through this until until uh, Kevin joins up. So we were going to start today with kind of those things that you could troubleshoot on your own. And those would be things like as simple as a leaky tap. They could be um, you have a clog, maybe your toilet's running, things like that. So those are things I think that, you know, you can relatively easily um, troubleshoot on your own and I started offering earlier in the you know when COVID first hit you know free video calling to help people guide them through troubleshooting things on their own to avoid the need for a service call and um, so that's something that I'm happy to offer I know that uh, Kevin he's uh, like I said he's a generous guy really willing to help so we're always willing to help guide you through what you might need it's just a matter of determining when you actually can handle it yourself and when you need uh, a plumber there to to actually do the work. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. For some reason, it still shows Kevin as unable to join. 
Let's see here. Bear with me. Anyhow, so I guess we'll we'll move on and I'll keep trying to see if I can pull them in. So let's see here, where do we start? Um, maybe we'll talk a bit more about some of the, oh, there you go, here he is. Cordy. One sec. Says it's connecting, so I think we should get him here soon. For you guys that joined in, thanks for tuning in. Bear with us while we get this all sorted out. There we go. Hey, Kev. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Pretty good. How you doing? Very good. Yeah, a little trouble connecting, but we got her sorted out. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, good to, good to have you. Um, yeah, so I thought we'd start off with um, talking a bit about stuff that homeowners can do themselves to be able to, uh, you know, troubleshoot things on their own and see where they, before they need to call a plumber in, right? So uh, on the screen now, you'll see I have uh, all Kevin's information. So if you ever need to get a hold of Butler Plumbing, there's their details there. And we'll bring it back up again later in the show. Um, so, you know, I, I, there's, I got some photos that I typically would bring up, Kevin, and that kind of helps to guide me through the conversation. But I think the most common things people can work on themselves is the, le the leaky tap, maybe their toilet's running, maybe a clogged drain, right? some of those things would be the simple ones. So maybe you want to start with those and give some advice as to what they can do to troubleshoot it before causing too many problems or potentially a, uh, you know, a major issue in their home. I guess one of the biggest things is uh, knowing what you're up against, right? So um, whether it be you're fixing a tap or going to attempt the toilet, knowing what the parts are and how they work is probably one of the biggest uh biggest hurdles for people um be prepared for a few extra trips to the supplier probably uh you know something that we can handle in you know 45 minutes might take you you know six trips to the wholesaler or to home depot whatever it be um but there's lots of good information on youtube and yeah don't be scared to give it a try and uh there's always a backup plan and uh, a phone number to butler plumbing if you need it yeah Absolutely. One thing, and I think every homeowner, if you don't know where your water main shutoff is in your home, you should probably go figure that out today because it can save you uh, if something does go sideways and you're trying to troubleshoot something or suddenly there's a leak and it's under a pressurized water line. That's an issue. So if, for our projects, when we start a job, we have what we we have a, we call it a site orientation checklist. And the things we check right away before any work starts is where is the water main and the shutoff? Um, you know, location of gas and shut off, you know, electrical meter and all those different things. So we have the ability to shut the site down if there's ever sort of an emergency. So as a homeowner, you should be aware of those things as well, right? So if you don't know, then you should you know. know. Another two, uh, you know, we have a lot of homeowners. It's, you know, Friday, Friday night, and it's a great time to start working on your plumbing. You got all weekend do the renovation and, and you take something apart and can't quite get it back together. Um, you know, be prepared for a few, a few days without water, if that's the case. So, so sometimes uh, a little pre-planning goes a long way when it comes to that. So. Absolutely. Let's talk about the giveaway item today, this taco leak breaker. Can you explain how it works? And then we'll talk a bit about how they can win it. Sounds good. So that valve that you see there, it's essentially just a ball valve. Um, but it's got a motorized handle on it, which hooks up to a controller, which has a sensor that we mount down by the hot water tank. So we mount this at your water heater on the cold water supply going into the tank. And if there's any water sense at the bottom of your tank, it's going to close that valve immediately. Um, so it, it can essentially, you know, save you from having 40, 50 gallons of water in your basement. So that's a good thing for sure. Absolutely. So um, for a chance to win this item today, which was graciously donated by Butler Plumbing and they'll handle the install as well. Oh, that's the wrong image. Good luck guessing from that one. Um, we got a bowl of old cartridges here. I'm just looking for the other picture. You need to guess how many cartridges are in this bowl. So just put your answer in the comments and the person who's closest um, will be the winner. 
it, there's way more than you think. I know the answer and I never would have guessed it. So um, anyhow, so a cartridge, I guess there, let's start with that, Kevin. What, what is the cartridge versus the faucet versus the rough in versus the trim kit? Just so people understand some of the terminology here before we get too much further into um, some of the options for fixtures and all that. Sure, yeah. So those cartridges, and you can see some pictures there. They're, most of the time, they're going to be essentially mixing hot and cold water together and turning it on and off. And they are the part that's behind the handle that you're operating. And most faucets nowadays are ceramic uh, seals, so they run pretty smooth. Older ones may have had uh, brass seats and rubbers, and they could wear out quite quickly. Um, if your faucet's leaking, this is probably why it's leaking. A little bit of debris got on the seat or uh, in between where the ceramic is. Uh, maybe put a little etching in there and now it's leaking. So any kind, any Well, looks like we got a bit of a feed interruption there. You still there, Kev? All right. Oh, there you are. All right. Signal still good or what? I hear you now. You cut out there for a second, but. So, oh, yeah. Oh, did you get, get enough info on the packages? I think so. I think so. So, I guess before we get all technical, let's talk about some options, I guess, that are out there for people. And, you know, why don't we start with, I guess, the kitchen. And, one thing I want to talk a bit about here is kitchen layouts and, and kitchen options for, for fixtures. So I'm just going to try to find these photos. I had all these nice photos lined up and now they, they got scrambled in my phone. Um, yeah, this Instagram Live has some pros and some cons for sure. The con might be that there's still some glitches in their system. But anyhow, so the farmhouse sink right apron sink whatever you want to call it as depicted here so uh, more than on a plumbing consideration i guess it's something i wanted to point out as an option for a sink style and talk a bit about it for a quick second and generally you cannot just retrofit one of these apron sinks in where you had a drop-in sink or an undermount sink before because the cabinet has to be modified to be able to support a the weight of the sink and the fact that the face of the cabinet is cut off um, are there any other considerations as far as like sink types people need to consider when it comes to the plumbing side, aside from just the cabinets? For sure. I mean, the space is always limited underneath the kitchen sink for sure. Um, if you're just putting in a sink and a faucet, usually we definitely have enough room for that. But when you start adding in a garburator, maybe a, a water filter or reverse osmosis, um, it can, the room underneath can get quite tight. So it does take a little bit of pre-planning about where the drain is going to get roughed in and where the water lines are. Um, those are the main considerations that, that you'd have to think about. Absolutely. And I, I have a great picture from one of our sites or some work you did for us, uh, which I can't find it now, but anyway, it shows kind of how tight the plumbing work was, was done. So we had a room still for a little organizer underneath there and there was still room for the garburator. And I think in the end, that's kind of the sign to me of a good plumber is someone who can think about layout and considers how it might impact, um, you know, the, the next guy, the cabinet maker or a guy putting in accessories or whatever it is. I, th I think, you know, a lot of the cabinets you might agree to like gone are the days of, of putting your trash can underneath your sink. Right. So, the room Absolutely. under the limited and, and usually people are are putting a whole separate cabinet for something like that for sure i think uh, we got a question here actually from uh, Alyssa. she's asking how someone would find their main water shut off um maybe you can quickly answer that so we can yeah so solve that. Yeah, good question Alyssa. you know in edmonton here probably you know 98 percent of homes have basements so you're going to find it in your basement typically at an outside wall closest to, you know, the front street um, is where the pipe's going to come in. You'll see a copper pipe coming through the floor and a, and a valve uh, followed by the water meter uh, that they keep track of your usage with. Um, so 
if you can find your water meter, your shutoff is uh, very close by for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Kev. Um, I guess while we're talking about kitchens, so the thing to consider is what's really popular now is people putting the range or their sink in an island. And that's something that does take some planning, um, especially if, if the sink's getting moved into the island, we have to consider how we're going to get a drain installed, the water lines run, and how it's going to vent. Um, can we talk a bit about that? Sure. Uh, so going back a few years, um, if we wanted to put a sink in an island, we had to do some pretty uh, fancy pipe work, uh, putting a drain and uh, a vent that would actually kind of loop back up and go back down. We called it an island vent. Uh, but in the recent years, we can just put uh, a one-way valve that'll actually, and it's called an air mittens valve, and it'll actually, while you're draining, the air can get pulled in through that valve, but yet it will not let any sewer gas smell out of that valve. So with that, it, it pretty much lets us run one pipe instead of two, so we can be fairly flexible running uh, any kind of drain to an island. It's definitely easier these days in renovations. Nice. Yeah, I know that sometimes the drain too, like if depends what you have underneath, like in the basement below. We've had jobs before where just the way that all the joists run, um, you end up with the need for a bulkhead underneath there or something, which is something to consider when you're planning that, that change in your kitchen layout. You got to make sure you talk to your plumber or your contractor to be sure that you're not going to get stuck with some weird bulkhead or maybe the need to open up your ceilings downstairs if... Uh, you know, if they're drywalled ceilings. Yeah. Okay. I guess um, I'm talking a bit about bathrooms here. And um, so here's, uh, you know, a, a freestanding tub, a nice slipper design, which is great. We get a, a lot of requests to put these in. And the most, there's two things that are quite complicated about installing these. And one is you need to be bang on with your drain location, but you also need to be bang on with where your water lines come up through the floor to make sure that when you put that floor mounted faucet in, it's gonna clear um, into the tub. And we've, you know, we've, there's nothing a learning curve to installing these things. Um, and you need to be really, you know, accurate and pre-plan how the layout's going to sit. Cause you do all the roughing in far before you get anywhere near putting in the tub. For sure. And it, even that faucet, you can see that faucet coming through the floor. I don't, I don't know if you've picked them up Paul before, but those things weigh probably you know, 50, 60 pounds, some of them, right? They're solid brass and uh, very tempting to to grab on there, almost like a handle if you're getting in and out of that tub. So you definitely have to be very secure uh, on the mount at the floor. Um, so a lot of cases, yeah, we need access below if we can. Um, they're pretty tricky install if you're on like a slab on grade house. Uh, it can definitely be done, but, um, and we have done it in the past, but um yeah, definitely pre-planning going into something like this. Uh, even these installs, you know, compared to a regular tub, you're you're definitely doubling, sometimes tripling your install time too, right? Absolutely. And I know on our side, like this, we have to have backing in place where that floor-mounted faucet's going to sit. So the thing to consider far in advance of installing that stuff to make sure it's roughed in in the right locations. And, you know, so, and I guess the same then applies as we get into say showers, for example, and I'm going to try to pull up a couple of pictures here I have of the rough in stage where, you know, here we show, this is at, this was a house that we built last year and you guys did the plumbing for us. And this is, you can't tell now, but this is their shower and their master in their ensuite bathroom. And you can see the, the rough in is there, the mixer valve, and you can see up how it's roughed in up to the shower head. And you can see a couple boxes framed there. Well, this turns into this. So you can imagine you need to plan exactly where things get roughed in and height from floor to mixer, height from floor to shower head and making sure everything is centered. So there's a lot of planning that goes into the, the plumbing rough in stage. Same as electrical is the same thing, but plumbing, you know, it can really get you if you don't rough it in well and do that planning in advance. Yeah, let's see sure here. can. And then even in the selection, of your fixtures, Paul, right? I mean, a lot of, a lot of people kind of wait till the last minute to decide what kind of faucet they want to put at their sink. 
and that's doable. You can wait uh, because it doesn't really matter. But when you're choosing a shower fixture, you, don't, you have to pre-plan because that rough in that's going in behind the wall uh, can only match up to a certain trim. So you have right. to do Absolutely. Work. And you got to consider too your wall thickness that you're going to put this stuff into. Lots of the new kits now require a two by six wall for it all to fit in. So if you're, you're retrofitting something, you got to make sure that you select a fixture that's going to work within the, you know, your existing structure. And that's where, again, a bit of, bit of research is needed up front. This hooking these showers up is probably one of the best parts of the job though, too, right? Uh, every plumber loves building these showers because they just know the end use, right? Every, like you look at this shower here, it looks amazing. You know, these customers, every time they get into it, they probably love it, enjoy it, right? So it's uh, a real focal point of the house for sure. Absolutely. I had a ton of good bathroom reno photos lined up to show here, but for some reason they're not where they need to be. So I can't show them, which is too bad. But anyhow, um, one thing to consider about the showers that I was hoping to show, which I don't have good photos of right now, would be the option to go with a curbless shower. So for anybody who doesn't know, um, a curbless shower, hmm, this isn't a great photo either, but I guess this would be one here. So a curbless shower does not have that little curb perimeter. You need to step over to get into a shower. And that's really nice if you're somewhere with maybe your you know, older parents live at home with you or um, you have some sort of disability and you don't want to have to step over the curb. Uh, but it also has a really nice spa-like kind of luxurious feel to it. But there's a lot more work has to go into making your entire bathroom floor level or flush and still have slope inside your shower floor. So there's a lot more work that goes into it on, you know, on the carpentry side and then also on the, on the plumbing rough in, especially if you're going like your, your drain has to be lower than your floor level. So there's a lot of work to do there. For sure. And the, you know, waterproofing that whole bathroom, right. Um, you know, instead of, I'm not sure what product you guys use, Paul, but like a curdy system underneath that shower floor, you know, just extending that into the entire bathroom. There's definitely some benefit to it, right? Uh, for access as well as, you know, just, uh, you, know, you know, we've got some tubs and some showers, right? Getting in and out, lots of water gets splashed on the floor. If you have one of those setups where the whole entire bathroom is waterproofed, you don't worry mm -hmm. about it. As much. Absolutely. I guess a thing to consider then too in your shower install and whether you have a curb shower or not is the drain type that you put in, right? So in this picture, you can see they have a linear drain um, and there's, there's benefits to going with linear and there's also the pros and cons to each. But the reason I like them is because you can see this guy's feet, he's standing in the middle of the shower, he's not standing on a drain. So when you, if you had a center drain, you'd be standing on the drain right now. So that's something to consider. Um, you know, the other option is in this photo, you've got a large format tile as your floor tile in the shower. And the reason you can do that is because you can slope that directly to the drain without needing to cut your tile up. If you had a center drain, you would need to then have this tile cut up so that it all slopes to the center of the shower. So usually with the center drain, you need a smaller format tile. With the linear drain, you have this nice clean look. Um, but again, of course, it will cost more because the drain kit costs more and there's a bit more work to do within the, the framing below the floor. I might have to get my eyes checked, Paul. I didn't know that was a guy. I thought that was uh, oh. a guy. <laughs> it could be. I thought I saw <laughs> hair on the feet, so I just assumed it was a dude, yeah. but you never know. Yeah. So, yeah. So here's another example of a linear floor drain, and, and they look sharp. Um, again, this one's with a curb shower, but again, um, they have a smaller format tile in this floor, so they did it more, I think, just for the look than for the, you know, to use a larger, larger format tile. All That's right, good. let's talk about our giveaway item here. All right, the Taco Leak Breaker. This could save you and save your house, and uh, it's worth about five fifty installed. So Butler Plumbing is going to uh, donate that and install it for us today. Not today, but we'll give it away today, and uh, you guys can set up a time to win it. You need to guess how many old cartridges are in this bowl, and the person with the closest guess to correct wins the, uh, oh, there's a hint, wins the taco <laughs> leak breaker. 
not many people have entered yet. I only see a couple people in, so let's see. Oh, you're all too low. You're all too <laughs> low. Just so you know, there's a there's your hint. Check back through the comment feed and you'll be able to see. So anyhow. All right, so moving right along, we talked about some options for some pretty stuff. Um, let's talk a bit about some some changes, I guess, when you're going to be doing a reno. Let's one really common one we do now is we end up going to a double vanity, um, where we have two sinks in the vanity versus uh, what used to be original originally just a single sink. So, I want to talk a bit about that and what that actually means on Ruffin. Sure. So, yeah. Most bathrooms, uh, going back a few years, it was very common just to have the one sink. Um, but trending these days, uh, everybody likes to definitely have, uh, I think new houses kind of started it. Uh, new houses, you'll typically see two sinks. So so people in older older houses, they're definitely looking for that upgrade to modern, to make things modern. And one of the easiest things is just to add a second sink. We are limited a lot of times with uh, existing plumbing. Um, so to add a second sink, it actually doesn't quite pass code uh, for the amount of fixtures that are draining through the existing pipes. Um, so there are some cases where we do need to increase that plumbing behind the wall or in the floor to accommodate that. Um, in, a, in a situation where we absolutely don't have access, um, some plumbing inspectors will, will make an exception and, and allow us to play, pipe those two sinks together for sure. Gotcha. But that, I guess in the end, you'll have to expect it to drain a bit more slowly that, if that's the case. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And I guess in there, like, where does, where does the cheater vent come in? And what is that? Maybe we can help explain how the venting works for the plumbing in general. Sure. So a plumbing vent, um, the purpose of a plumbing vent is to protect the, the P-trap. Um, so the P-trap is what holds water, and that keeps the sewer gas smell from coming out of your sink, out of your shower drain, all that. And what a vent does is protect and keep that water in there. If you didn't have a vent, what would happen is that water would just drain out that sink, and, and it would siphon itself down and out of the way. And then you'd be left with an open pipe and sewer gas smell coming out. So making sure that you have a proper vent, even if a vent was plugged on the roof, it could give you the same uh, kind of trouble where it would, um, when you're not looking to drain that trap, it could wick itself out or get siphoned out. So the picture there that you got, uh, there's a, a, a one-way uh, sure vent or a one-way air admittance valve on top there. And like I was talking about before, it lets air down to replace that water as it drains, but it won't let the sewer gas smell out. Um, they, they do a pretty good job at it. From time to time, they can fail. There's a spring in there and, a, and a, almost like a leather seat. And once that, uh, it can get some debris on it, maybe the, the line got plugged up and then it would need to get changed out. So it's a, a maintenance thing for sure. Gotcha, okay. Um... All right, sorry, I missed, I'm trying to find this group of photos that I have. So we just did a, a basement remodel and we had a whole bunch of groundwork to change because we were changing the configuration. And in this house, like it was shocking. We, it, was a, it was a house that a client bought fully renovated. And to make a long story short, we've now fully gutted the entire house. And we've had to replumb the entire house, rewire it, re-insulate it. We had to do structural uh, repairs to the home because somebody had flipped it had no permits pulled, no inspections done, and just did a shocking job of it all. So, you know, this client decided to make sure this house would uh, would last their lifetime now because it was kind of their, you know, it's their settle in and sort of family home. So I had a bunch of great photos to show the groundwork that we, we did. And on the same vein of the importance of planning your project, um, I guess I can give you some ideas here. This is the basement. So we had to cut open the concrete floors and relocate you know, that one on the lower left, that's their toilet drain. Behind my head would be their vanity drain. Um, further up there, that's, I think, uh, oh, that was a tub drain. And you can see at this stage, we don't have walls framed yet. You need to be pretty accurate about how you rough this stuff all in at this stage, because the next step after this was your plumbing inspection. Thanks to the green secker, Kevin. And then 
The next one is you pour the concrete and then from there you go back onto framing and then onwards. And if one of these is not in the right place, you know, have a major problem when it comes time to install your fixtures. And that's where you can end up with really silly challenges with the bathroom door that hits the toilet or not having the correct code required room on either side of your toilet or all these different things. So like plumbing is not plumbing does, plumbers don't get enough credit. Like there's a ton of thinking that has to go into plumbing. They're not just, um, I don't know. I think you guys get the short stick it's sometimes. Experience. Absolutely. Experience. You know, a job like this doesn't, you look at it, Paul, it doesn't scare you. You know what uh, it takes to jackhammer a floor and, and pull the concrete out and, and get the concrete back in. But we go to a lot of homeowners and they want to avoid this stage altogether. And they'd rather live with having that toilet this far away from the wall and put their shower up on a base. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I walk into a house like that and I just know right away that it wasn't done by a plumber. You know, it probably wasn't done to code. There's probably venting issues and everything. So, so a lot of times I just coach people through, like, it's not hard to do this. Um, and the end result is way better than if you would leave the layout you know, um, not operational or too tight. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, the planning that goes into it definitely uh, is worthwhile for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I got a question here from Angie Hutchison. She's wondering about a steam shower on the top floor. Is that a major reno? Um, I guess it depends how everything's finished in your existing bathroom, but I would probably say more likely than not, yes, it's probably a major reno because you have to want to waterproof the entire shower. You need glass that seals tight to hold the steam in. You need better ventilation in there to suck the steam out of your shower when you're done. Um, you know, you need to get your, your uh, steam generator up there. You need to, there's a lot of considerations on your end, Kevin, how does that in, uh, impact you? Yeah. So we would need uh, a water line over there, um, roughing in uh, a steam outlet. So we need access behind the shower for sure. You got to find a place to put that steam generator as well, um, either in a cabinet or a closet. Um, you probably aren't looking more than 20 feet away from your steam shower. Uh, if your basement's accessible, that might be okay, but second floor might be tough. And then uh, electrical too. I mean, you're looking mm -hmm. at pulling a pretty fat wire up to uh, the second floor and making sure you have enough room in your panel as well. And, uh, but it can be, uh, I don't know if uh, you've been in a steam shower, but uh, people that have them love them. And uh, they're almost in there every day, right? So it's definitely a very good upgrade worthwhile in the house. Absolutely. This image in the background, this is a steam shower we did a few years ago. And you can kind of see those two little ports lower to the ground there. And that's actually this the steam uh, ports. And the, the generator is in a closet behind this bathroom. So it worked okay for layout there. But like you mentioned, we ended up having to pull quite a heavy gauge wire up from the basement to the second floor to do this. So it required a bunch of walls to be opened up on a level where there wasn't any other renovations planned. Right. So it's, it's something to consider for sure. Steam generators are also uh, our water in, in Edmonton and around here is very hard. And anytime, you know, you heat up water on your stove and your kettle, you, you know, it's going to scale. Uh, the sediment just drops out of it. So steam generators are no different probably even worse. So a lot of times uh, conditioning that water before it goes into the steam generator can, can really cut down on the maintenance involved with one. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's again, like we we're doing another major reno together right now. And, you know, they, they switched to a tankless hot water system and, and that that's one good upgrade on its own. But from there you need to talk about, well, all right, do you want to have a research line while this is being done? Do you, do you want the water softeners? And, you know, it's kind of a matter of, you need to think about, think ahead of like, what are the options that come with this upgrade you've chosen? Because there's, there's so much available out there now. And, um, you know, I think as a good contractor in general, whether it is your plumber or your general contractor like me, it's our job to tell you what's available. This isn't a sales tactic. It's my responsibility to make sure you get the best end result or at least have the option to decline 
and not find out later, oh goodness, if I'd spent an extra thousand bucks, it could have had a research line. And I guess maybe Kev, you want to explain what a research line is for people? Sure, yeah. So uh, hot water tanks and tankless water heaters are making hot water and then they distribute it through the hot water line in your house. If you've got uh, fixtures that are very close to the water heater, it's usually not an issue. You can turn on the tap and right away you get hot water. But in some houses where you got second story or uh, very large bungalows, you know, it can be uh, 50, 70, 80 feet away from the water heater. You might have a fixture. So you turn on your shower and it can take a couple minutes before you get hot water. So what a recirc line does is we use a pump and it's down at your water heater and we're just at a slow circulation, just moving hot water all the way from the tank up to that far fixture and back again. So when you open up your tap, you've only got a couple seconds before you get hot water. Mm -hmm. So essentially they're, they're saving you a bunch of water. You're not dumping cold water down the drain. Absolutely. I have a, a by level, but it, it is about 50 feet from my hot water heater to my kitchen sink. And uh, it drives me crazy. I have to run my tap for like a minute to get hot water. And I'm constantly filling jugs up with like lukewarm water because I hate wasting water. And it's, uh, you know, at some point when we do a reno, I will, I'll add the research line for sure. But yeah. uh, that's another thing too about design, right? Uh, it's probably overlooked a lot of the time. By the time we get a blueprint, you know, everything's kind of set in stone where those bathrooms go. But one thing people don't think about is, you know, even the cost, if you can locate your bathroom, you know, centrally over top of, of your uh, mechanical room, there can be a lot of cost savings there. And even mm -hmm. back to back bathrooms, you know, you can use half the pipe, uh, half the labor. Um, you see it in a lot of fifties bungalows, right? Where the bathrooms are stacked mm -hmm. and, the water heater is directly below, right? You yeah. didn't have to go too far. It's so a, it's maybe, very, I'm sure yeah. in the future, um, you know, as people talk about being green and, you know, conserving water and even conserving resources, uh, material and stuff, uh, good option is just in the design uh, to do it properly from the beginning. Absolutely. We got a question here from Original Ninja Martini. I know this guy's name is Ryan. Um, do you have an opinion on tankless hot water uh, heaters in Edmonton is hard water an issue? Hard water is an issue for sure. So if you have a tankless water heater, um, once once a year, maybe once every couple of years, you're going to need to descale that water heater. Uh, it's not a not a hard process. Uh, it takes a little bit of equipment. You're going to need a pump and some hoses. Uh, but, but we know that we have some homeowners that take care of it themselves, and others we uh, you know put on an annual service. Uh, without it, you know, it's like uh, trying to go backward. Once it scales up, it's really hard to, to kind of beat that scale out of there internally. So staying on top of it from the beginning is the best. Mm -hmm. um, you know, tankless water heaters in Edmonton, uh, retrofitting them can sometimes be tough. I mean, we, we might have to increase a gas line size, um, which can add to the cost. Um, I think in a new house, though, uh, they're a very good option. Um, everyone is a little bit different. So if somebody is looking for a tankless, we do have to get some, some eyes on site and, mm -hmm. and see where we can vent them. Uh, in some cases, uh, we just find that some people aren't a great fit for them. And in other cases, uh, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Let's get one in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's some, there's some pros and cons for sure. Like you mentioned, yeah, there's a good chance you need to upgrade your gas line size. So that's an additional cost. But now that these are direct vented, you have the opportunity if you're doing your furnace at the same time, or if you already upgraded your furnace, to eliminate the need for your chimney. And that can often get you some space back in a bathroom or into a closet on the main and second floors. We do that quite often. And now we're doing a house right now together where we've got a new high efficiency furnace going in. We put in um, a tankless water heater. And as a result, we are able to demo a chimney out of a closet and out of a, out of a, ensuite bathroom and we could completely reconfigure the footprint of this space now um actually here it is um this is a this is a second floor ensuite we're working in and it's probably hard to tell but in that bottom right hand corner you see a little frame square which it's hard to tell in the picture but that used to be the location of the chimney chase and uh now we get to take that space back for the uh for the footprint 
but uh yeah so i guess on that note talking about hot water heaters um it's i guess distribution of the water itself and lots of older homes won't have this as a, a manifold system and can you explain a bit about the benefit and why why we've gone to the manifold system now versus how it used to be a plumbed in yeah so you'll find this in a lot of new homes for sure um that manifold system is definitely going to cut down um, on labor for installing the plumbing system uh, just in the way that we do it at rough end stage uh, we kind of set up our, our our pipe on an uncoiling uh, kind of apparatus and you can just as fast as you can pull it and and attach the clips uh, it's in place um, whereas the other option is running a trunk and, and branches and teeing off to each individual fixture uh, it, there's a little more in, involved in that um, I think another reason people choose these manifold systems, uh, it, uh, there can be access to different shutoffs. So some people will install individual shutoffs on these manifolds, and that can be, there's kind of a system, yeah, that's uh, kind of a proprietary product and, and uh, works really well. Some people like that and uh, looks pretty sharp. Um, but going back to the research, when you, you know, you have individual lines running to each fixture. I mean, you could be in the, the second floor bathroom and you open up a tap, you just get out of the shower, which was hot water. And then you open up the tap to shave and you got to pull another two minutes worth of cold water up that, up that, that line. So, so mm -hmm. they, they have benefits and they uh, also have a few setbacks too. So every house is a little bit different and we install both and we just kind of look at the, the the benefits for for why we would put in a manifold system or a trunk and branch okay okay good um i kind of glazed over some of the stuff initially of what a homeowner could do themselves and i think the the one of the things we talk about real fast is like preventative maintenance or just keeping an eye out for issues and Here's a bunch of different photos I think that you should look at and, and then you should go down into your mechanic room and go, do any of my pipes look like this, right? If you have signs of corrosion on there, um, that, that will eventually lead to a leak, right? And here we got a couple fern coves on there, I guess. Um, you know, the top of your hot water heater looks like this. Holy smokes, you better make a phone call fast. Um, but I think it's up to you to look around and just be aware of how does everything look? Do you see signs of a leak? Is it a minor leak right now? You're like, ah, whatever. It drips once, once an hour. No big deal. I mean, it's only going to get worse. Or if it does stop, it might be because something got jammed in the hole briefly, but it will eventually, you know, erode away and, and leak. So what, what would you do if you saw a pipe like this, Kev? Oh. I hear you. I don't know if you hear me. Sounds like maybe his uh, Wi-Fi froze up there. Anyhow, you see pipes like this in your house, um, you should definitely make in a phone call to have someone kind of do an assessment to see how bad and <laughs> how much pipe needs to be replaced. No, oh, I see. You still there, Kev? I have to give a second for his... Uh, Wi-Fi signal to come back to life here. Um, here's an image of a a pipe that's got some buildup and corrosion. Oh, hey, Kev, you there? Oh, I can't hear you, man. We got a question here. I might as well take it while uh, we're waiting on Kev. I'm scared of the question button on this thing. Here we go. Oh, contest reminder. All right. Oh, I still don't hear you, man. I see your mouth moving. Don't hear you. I don't know if it's him or me. Can you guys hear me? Someone comment that the yay or nay. I see Kev's mouth moving, but I can't hear any sounds. Mm, the live show.
All right. Someone send me a thumbs up or something if you can hear me or not. I can't hear Kevin. All right. Well, I'm going to assume you guys can hear me. Oh, here we go. I've told you can hear Paul, but not Kevin. Okay. Hey, Kev, maybe, um, maybe disconnect from the, the Wi-Fi and back on or something, and I'll send you a new invite if you get kicked off the show here. But we can't hear you for some reason, so. All right. You still there? Say something, Kev. Oh, Kevin Gordy's out. All right. We'll give him a chance to come back on. Let's talk about the giveaway item here. So we've got this uh, Taco Leak Breaker water shutoff system. So this thing could really save you um, a major issue with flooding your home. So Butler Plumbing has donated one of these for the giveaway item today. And to win, you need to guess how many of these old... Um, Cartridges are in this bowl, which I can't show you the picture yet because my phone's waiting for Kevin to join back in. But I'll show you an image here in a sec. Oh, hey, Kev, I see you now. No, I can't hear you All again. All right, I'm back. Oh, there you are. Beauty. All right, so guess how many cartridges are in this bowl. Enter it in your comments. I'll give you a hint. 69 is too low and 80 is too high. There you go. Closest to the number at the end of the show is the winner of the Taco Leak Breaker. All right, Kev, what were we talking about when we got cut off there? Oh, yeah, we're talking about corrosion of pipes. What does someone do if they see this condition of pipe in their home? Sounds good. Oh. Uh, the last thing I seen was the, uh, the scuffed up on that pipe. Uh, shoot, and I guess you're you're breaking in and out. Oh, Tara, you're close. You're close on your guess. Ooh, we're getting right in the neighborhood now. Hmm, Kev. All right. All right, Kev. Let's try it again. Can you hear me? I guess a delay here. That's what it looks like. Okay, well, you want to try switching to your LTE and see if that helps? All right. Well, I can see we're going to have a winner on this thing. Now, if we have a tie, I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah, we'll she's having a tough time there, Paul. All right. I hear you, but now your mouth's not moving, so I think there's a delay on your end. All right. How many fingers am I holding up? Okay. Okay. No, I can't hear you again. Right. So yeah, you got. I'm not sure what you got here. It's just an old drain line. Uh, pretty rough shape. Yeah, we'll go to one of these copper lines. So. I think it's pretty normal for the copper to get some level of this. Nope. Sure. Well. All right. Hey, Kev, we want to switch to your, try going to your LTE and drop in your Wi-Fi. See if that helps. Because there seems to be a, a bit of a delay. Because um, I hear you speaking, but your mouth's not moving or, or, or vice versa. So Angie, she's asking if the taco thing can work on washing machine hoses. That's a question that probably Kevin should answer. I'm going to see about, uh, well, let's see, he's got his phone. He's still connected. Oh. Yeah. I hear you now, yeah. You got can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I hear you. I don't can see you. Can you hear yet. me at all? Yeah, okay. Good question, Angie. Uh, that shutoff valve, we can actually even put that on the water main as well. Uh, it doesn't just need to go on a hot water heater. So that's somewhere you could put that on the water main, and we can run that sensor underneath your wash machine for sure. 
and then it would shut down your the whole cold and hot water you know, on your house. Nice. That's good to know. Good, uh, good question, Angie. So I can't see you, Kev, but I can hear you. I think that's better than the opposite. Um, but uh, what are you trying to do? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was uh, is this a face for radio. Is that something? Is that a saying? That's what I keep getting told about me doing the show. But anyways, um, I had some some pictures of some pl plumbing fails I wanted to show, and they aren't showing up very well. But um, this one shows like they roughed in their shower head outlet too high and it's kind of blocked on my, I don't know if you can see it, but some of this fixture is actually drywalled into the ceiling, um, which is again, this, it's a planning fail. And I think before I would drywall my fixture into the ceiling, I'd probably go and swap out for a different fixture type. But um, here's a beauty, kitchen or a sink into a urinal. You know, now we got Kevin's face and we got no audio again. Oh man, I can't hear you, Kev. Here's another yeah. good one. That one's for play. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, the shower head down at knee height. I mean, maybe it's a uh, maybe that, it's a bidet. That High reminds me bidet. of uh, if you go online. Okay. When you go online, sometimes you'll find a toilet have a sink on top where the tank is. Okay. Oh, I kind of picked that out. I mean, the sink on top of the tank kind of makes. I don't know about. Um, I don't know about this application. Uh, I'd be scared to pee in there, but anyways. Let's see if I can pull Kev back in here. I've had some difficulty with his feed today, which is too bad. Um, but we'll hopefully get him back in here with uh, a better signal. But so it's 152. Holy smokes, this hour has blown by once again. Um, hopefully we get Kevin in to say goodbye. But uh, I'll announce the winner here shortly for our giveaway item. Hey, Kev. Are you back in the... Can you hear me? Oh, I see your mouth moving again. I'm, well, I'm back. Can you hear me? Oh, I, yeah, I can hear you now. All right. Well, we're getting close to the giveaway, so I'll wait for the name to come through for who's, who was the winner. Um, for those of you who I'm are sure planning a rental, okay. you, need some, uh, you need some help um, with a project you're considering, you can certainly get a hold of Kevin. Uh, or Chelsea over at Butler Plumbing. There's all their information on the screen. Um, great resource. Uh, we work with them regularly. They almost exclusively do all of our plumbing. It's because uh, they're absolutely trustworthy and reliable. And uh, yeah, what can I tell you? That's uh, a really good resource for us. So I invite you to reach out to them as well. Um, mm -mm -mm, we got, let's see, what do we have here? We're going to hold on for one second on the giveaway because no one's actually nailed the number. It's pretty close. So we'll wait another couple of minutes and see if anybody else can get it. So the, uh, the skill testing question is how many cartridges are in this bowl? So I think uh, there's been some close ones. Oh, no, I see one. I see a winner. I'll just call it out now. Angie Hutchison, you are the winner. Um, 74 was the magic number. Is that the answer? Yes, 74 is the answer. So there you go, Angie Hutchison. You're going to be the winner of the Taco Leak Breaker. Kevin, I'm sure we've had technical difficulties today. But uh, I guess the nature of the live show and technology in general. If you guys have any questions for me, you want to talk about your reno. Uh, you want me to help steer you clear of landmines out there as you're planning to do your own project, then I'm happy to talk with you. Just give our office a call, 780-455-4446. I'll pin my number up here now in case you um, need to get a hold of us. Again, happy just to give some advice. And, uh, you know, I mean, we've done this a lot, so we know what to do 
to be aware of when you're planning your reno and and like Kevin talked about earlier, you know, there's lots of homeowners that are scared of certain stages where there is floor work or demolition. And, uh, you know, I think it's something to consider because this stage might look scary for you, but really it can give you the best end result. And it's worth having, you know, someone come in, at least give you some advice and guide you in the right direction. So you can actually properly execute on your reno and have the layout you want and not be so frustrated by it. Um, so if you do need some advice, by all means, um, reach out. I'm happy to help out. Um, you know, as far as kind of the calm, more common maintenance stuff goes in the house again, I think often now, especially in this strange time with COVID, you know, we can set up video calls to help diagnose things. And, uh, I did help a, 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 a family about a month ago. She had a leaky tap and I did a FaceTime call with her for about 30 minutes. And I managed to coach her through fixing her own leak. And she felt really empowered by that and a bit more confident about being able to tackle her own, um, some of her maintenance issues in her home. And then Butler plumbing, because, uh, you know, it might get a little bit too much um, for a homeowner sometimes. So, all right. Looks like Kevin's out of here. It's a shame about the technical difficulties, but. I guess that's the uh, the nature of the beast sometimes. The live show is always exciting because you just never know what you're going to get. Um, next week on the Art of Renovation Live, we are meeting with Urban Granite. Talk a bit about countertops, countertop options, considerations for what you would need to prepare for countertop-wise if you're considering a countertop replacement only. Um, or whether you're planning to renovate your whole kitchen. Because again, like plumbing, there's a lot to consider. And that's where I think you should lean on, you know, your, your resources like me and other good contractors out there are happy to help you to make sure that, um, you know, it gets done correctly. So the money you spend, spend your money once, do it right the first time. All right. I'm going to pull Kevin in here just for the last tech here to say goodbye and thank him for being on the show. See, it's trying to pull him in right now. So got about three minutes left. So um, if you have any questions, by all means, you can send a, send a message off here. What we got here? We got a couple comments. So oh, Angie's saying Urban did her. Top manufacturers, but I thought Urban would be a good one to talk with uh, next week. And, uh, yeah, like, like Butler plumbing, you know, I have my preferred vendors that I use and there's different reasons why, um, why they're considered preferred to me. And usually it's a bit about them being client focused, having good service and living up to their word. You know, I, I promise a lot to my clients and, uh, I expect that my sub trades that come in and my vendors will, we'll kind of live up to our collective promise to the client that we will do our best. We'll be on time and be on budget, but then also, you know, we'll give them the right advice along the way. And that's a key part of a renovation. Um, you know, is along the way, there's always going to be things that could be done to improve a layout, to improve performance or find a better material. And it's not a sales tactic. You know, I think it's my responsibility to guide you and coach you properly and, you know, you can always say no, right? But if you don't know and aren't given the opportunity to turn it down and you find out later, that can be incredibly frustrating, especially if it's something to do with, you know, with a best practice or a better material. And, and often I find ways to help save people money along the way and present them the option. Hey, look, if we did this this way, we could save you, you know, a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. And the same idea applies. You can opt out and stick with the plan. Um, so it goes both ways. And in the end, you know, um, whoever your contractor is, you're talking to a general contractor with a bigger project, you're talking just to your plumbing contractor for something smaller. In the end, we're all there to help you. And if you don't find you're getting that kind of help, they don't have your back, then I think you're working with the wrong contractor, right? So anyhow, uh, I've got 40 seconds left until Instagram's going to kick me to the curb. So um, thanks so much for tuning in to the Auto Renovation Live. Um, this show, this series started on a bit of a whim um, for lack of something better to do. 
And uh, it's, it's gone well. I really enjoy it. I like chatting with my guests and I hope you guys find it informative. You ever need to reach out to me, you're welcome to give the office a call, uh, 780-455-4446. Uh, tune in next week. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you to Kevin and Butler Plumbing. And thank you all for tuning in. Have a great week. See you next